Welcome to Solutions Studio. This is a free series on C programming language. If you like these videos, please subscribe to follow along with this series. Also, please like and leave a comment and share the video to help spread this series. Hello and welcome to this episode. And in this episode, we are going to discuss about function call stack and stack frames. Well, for you to understand how C performs a function calls, we need to first consider a data structure that is called a stack. Well, you can think of a stack as a pile of dishes. You usually place a dish on top of the stack referred to as pushing the dish onto the stack. Similarly, you typically remove a dish from the top referred to as popping the dish off the stack. And stacks are known as last in first out data structures. That means that the last item that was pushed inserted on the stack is the first item that is going to be popped or removed from the stack. And that's basically what a stack is. Stay tuned as we go into more details of function call stacks and stack frames in the coming episodes. As each function is called, it may call other functions, which may call other functions all before any function returns. So at some point, each function must give the control back to the one who called it. So we have to keep track of the return addresses that each function needs to return control back to the function that called it. The perfect data structure to handle this type of information is called a function call stack. A new entry is added to the stack every time a function calls another function. This entry, called the stack frame, has the return address to get back to the function that called it. It has also some other information that we will be talking about in the coming videos. When a function that was called returns, the stack frame for the function's call is popped and control moves to return address listed in the popped stack frame. Each function that is called always finds the information it needs to return to its caller at the top of the call stack. If a function that has been called calls another function, a stack frame for the new function call is added to the call stack. So the new function's return address, which it needs to get back to its caller, is now at the top of the stack. And that's basically how the functions, they keep track of calling one another. Thank you for staying with me in this episode and stay tuned as we go into more details of call stack in the coming episodes. The stack frame also has another important responsibility. Most functions have local variables which must exist while the function is running. If the function calls another function, they need to stay active. But when a function that was called returns to the function that it was originally called from, the local variables of the called function needs to go away. The memory for local variables should be saved in the stack frame of the function that was called. The stack frame is only there as long as the function that called it is running. When the function ends, and no longer needs its local variables, its stack frame is also popped. The program will no longer know about these local variables and that's how the local variables are going to be deleted from the program. Thank you for being with me in this episode and I hope to see you in the coming episodes where we go into more details of function call stack. Hello and welcome to this episode and in this episode we are going to be discussing about stack overflow. So as you know from the previous episodes that whenever functions are being called they are being pushed onto the stack. So when function 1 is called it's being pushed into the stack and whenever function 1 calls function 2, function 2 is then pushed onto the stack on top of function 1 and accordingly, function tree, when it's invoked by function 2, it is being pushed on top of this tag above function 2. Now, of course, the amount of memory in a computer is 
finite, so only limited memory can be used uh, to store stack frames on the function called stack. So if more function calls occur, then the amount of memory that we have on the computer and on the stack frame, then a fatal error known as a stack overflow occurs. And now you know that this is how the website stackoverflow.com got its name. Stay tuned as we go into more details of function call stack in the coming episode. Hello and welcome to this episode and in this episode let's go and write a program that is using a function called square that's going to be calculate the square of a number. So let's get started. Let's go and run this program as we have defined a as 10 then we expect the answer of a square. As you can see 10 squared is equal to 100. And that's it. Stay tuned as we go into more details of this program and we'll try to explain the function called stack using this example. Following up from our previous episode where we wrote the square function and this episode we are going to go and try to explain the function called stack in action for you. The first step is that the operating system calls the main function. This pushes a stack frame onto the stack as it is shown in the diagram. The stack frame tells main function how to return to the operating system that is when transferring to the return address of R1 and it also contains the space for the main's local variable A which is initialized to 10. The second step is that when main function before it returns to the operating system the main function now calls the function square. This causes a stack frame for square to be pushed onto the function call stack as shown in the diagram. And this stack frame contains the return address that square needs to return to main, that is R2, and the memory for square's local variable such as x. After the square function calculates the square of its argument, it needs to return to main function and it no longer needs the memory for its local variable x. So this tag is popped, giving square function the return location in main, that is r2, and losing square's local variable. Function main now displays the result of calling square. Reaching main's closing right brace pops its stack frame from the stack. This gives main the address it needs to return to the operating system that is R1. At this point, the memory for main's local variable such as A is unavailable anymore. <music> 